My name is Eric Austin, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco Systems. I will be presenting on deploying the Cisco Secure Firewall with the AWS Gateway Load Balancer. I will begin with a presentation of the architecture, followed by a demonstration of the configuration. The AWS Gateway Load Balancer forwards traffic to firewalls through a Geneve tunnel. These firewalls comprise what is known as a target group. Because the packets are tunneled, there is no modification to the packets or the packet headers, and any packets associated with a particular connection are forwarded to the same firewall. The Gateway Load Balancer is associated with one or more subnets within a VPC and can load balance across multiple availability zones within that VPC. The Gateway Load Balancer endpoint is what intercepts the traffic transparently and forwards it to the Gateway Load Balancer through an AWS private link. The Gateway Load Balancer endpoint is a valid next top type for VPC route tables. When you create a Gateway Load Balancer endpoint, you associate it with a single subnet, and therefore it is associated with a single availability zone. AWS delivers packets to that subnet after they are inspected. So here we see the flow of the traffic from the Gateway Load Balancer endpoint to the firewalls through the Gateway Load Balancer. First, the Gateway Load Balancer endpoint intercepts traffic and sends it across the private link to the Gateway Load Balancer. The Gateway Load Balancer then sends it through the Geneve Tunnel to the firewalls. The firewalls process the packets and send them back through the Geneve Tunnel to the Gateway Load Balancer, which sends the traffic back to the Gateway Load Balancer endpoint. Note that the firewall does not have to make any decisions about the routing. So let's abstract the inspection part of this uh, network and let's see how we can scale this. So we'll put that into a service VPC and then we'll assume that our applications are in an application VPC. Here's your typical situation without inspecting. The question is how do we insert the inspection? The answer is we have to create a subnet. That's that gateway load balancer endpoint subnet and the endpoint. We then use a private link. Notice there's no uh, VPC peering, no transit gateway. It simply sends the traffic over the private link to the gateway load balancer. This can even be between separate accounts. And uh, some of the details of how you would configure the routing are included in this slide for your reference. Now this certainly scales to multiple application VPCs with one gateway load balancer endpoint within each VPC. But how do we handle the east-west traffic, the inter-VPC traffic? Let's uh, look at a scalable design involving a transit gateway. In each VPC, we create a subnet to facilitate the routing. It is easier to configure the routing and have confidence that the routing is doing what you want to if you have a separate route tables on separate subnets for the transit gateway traffic. Now, how do we insert the inspection into this picture? We put the Gateway Load Balancer endpoint into the service VPC, add that Gateway Load Balancer endpoint subnet, and the private link between the Gateway Load Balancer endpoint and the Gateway Load Balancer. And then everything else comes down to routing configuration to make sure that we inspect the traffic we want to inspect and bypass inspection for the traffic we want to bypass inspection. And for your reference, I include the routing configuration in the case that you want all the inter-VPC traffic to be inspected. Let's move on to the configuration demonstration. Here we have the firewall management center managing a group of firewalls. Actually, now there's only one firewall in the group for simplicity, but you probably put all of your firewalls in your target group into a group. This has no configuration. This is a freshly registered firewall. We have two data interfaces. Let's configure one of them. That's all we need for this use case. So let's enable the interface, give it a name, and put it into a security zone. And let's give it an IP address. We can do that via DHCP. 
All right, now let's configure the encapsulation. That's the VTAP tab. We have to enable the network virtual edge and add the tunnel endpoint, which is the that outside interface to say, take the traffic from the outside interface, de-encapsulate it. That's what this network virtual edge will do. Well, then what will it do with the traffic? Well, it will send it to a virtual interface that we now have to create. We call this a VNI interface, and we have to give it a name. We have to put it into a security zone, and it's not going to have a segment ID like VXLANs. It's simply going to enable the proxy. We do have to give it a VNI interface ID and enable the VTAP. In other words, associate it with the outside interface. Notice that there are no IP address necessary for this interface. We have now configured the interfaces for the firewall. Now, we have to enable Jumbo Fame, so it'll require a reboot. That's because of the encapsulation. But now what we have to do is get it to respond to the health probes. So we do this with what are called platform settings. And there's a variety of platform settings. We could apply it to the group or to the firewall. I'll do both, although that's redundant. And one of the platform settings corresponds to the HTTP server. By default, it listens to port 443. And who should we respond to? Anything coming from that outside subnet, because that's the subnet that the probes are going to be coming from. And what interfaces? Well, not the VNI. This is the actual VTAP. The outside interface is going to be receiving those health probes. And there, we've actually finished the configuration of the firewall to inter um, operate with the AWS Gateway Load Balancer. You can see the interface policy, the platform settings, and the VTAP configuration. And um, after the deployment's complete, if we log into the firewall, we can actually see the DHCP IP address of that outside interface. We're going to need that to configure the load balancer. Let's move on to the AWS configuration. We start by creating the target group. And we're going to have to use IP addresses because the firewall has more than one interface. And here's the key. We're going to use Geneve for the target group. For the health probe, it's very important we use TCP port 443 for, uh, to, because that's how we configured the firewall. And uh, we include the IP address of that outside interface in our pending IP addresses. And there we are done configuring the target group. So now the next thing we do is configure the load balancer. And we have to create a new load balancer. Of course, this is going to be a gateway load balancer. And when we create this, we have to give it a name. We have to associate it to a VPC, the VPC where the firewalls live. And then we have to associate it with a uh, availability zones. I include both availability zones, even though we might only be using one for now, because you can't change those later. And then you associate it with the target group that we've created. And there, that's all there is to creating the load balancer. Now we have to have the endpoints talk to the load balancer through what's called an endpoint service. So we create an endpoint service for this firewall, give it a name. It's a gateway load balancer endpoint service. There's our gateway load balancer, only one to choose from. Now, we could uh, have it require acceptance if we were having third parties using this. But since we're using it, let's bypass that. Now, all we have to do is take the uh, service name. This is what we would give to third parties. Or in this case, this is what we're going to use to actually create the gateway load balancer endpoint. So notice we will actually look up this service and we better find it. Oh, there it is. And uh, now... Uh, what we do is decide what VPC to put the gateway load balancer endpoint. It could be any of the VPC. It's not necessarily the one the firewall's in, of course. And there, we've created the endpoint. It's going to be a, in a pending state at first, as you can see here in the, uh, in the portal. And it would stay in that state until accepted. Because of our auto-accept, that will eventually 
turn into available. And that's the demonstration. Thank you very much for your time.